everyone, I'm Dr. Carolyn Willekes, and welcome to this episode of The Tale Behind. And this week, we are talking about an animal to whom I have devoted much of my life, both personally and academically, and that is the horse. So as a young girl, I became horse mad. I woke up one day and decided I wanted to ride horses. I wanted to know everything about these animals. No idea why, no idea where it came from. My parents are probably still wondering how it came to be, but now many, many years later, Right? The horse is still very important in my life. And sort of the stereotype of the horse crazy little girl is something we associate with the modern world, right? Little girls and their ponies. But the idea of loving horses and being almost obsessed with them is nothing new. In fact, thousands of years ago, the Greeks coined the phrase hippomania, basically an obsession with horses. Something about this animal, like my noble steed Bert here, has driven us to great extremes for millennia. No idea why. But one of the most iconic partnerships between horse and rider in human history is probably that of Alexander the Great and his famous horse, Bucephalus. So Alexander was a prince and later king of Macedonia, a region known for its horsemanship. And when Alexander was a young boy, sort of an adolescent, his father Philip held a horse fair. Uh, in the capital. He needed some new horses, and so he invited all of the local horse traders to, to bring the best the best horses they had. And Thessaly was the region most renowned for horse breeding in Greece, and so a Thessalian horse trader, trader brought this extraordinary stallion for Philip to look at. It was beautiful. He was equine perfection. He was also incredibly expensive and seemingly unrideable. None of Philip's men could get near this horse. He reared, he bucked, he bit, he kicked, he squealed. At which point Philip said to this trader, I don't care how well-bred or nice this horse is, he's a waste of time. No one can ride him. Why are you wasting my time? At which point a rather precocious young Alexander, who, it should be pointed out, had an interestingly tempestuous relationship with his dad, piped up from the audience and basically said, Dad, you're being a fool. You're throwing away the best horse in this fair. And Philip, not appreciating being called out by his young son in front of all sorts of people, is like, oh, you think you can do better? The best riders and trainers in this kingdom can't sit on the horse, and you think you can. And Alexander is like, yeah, of course I can. He's a teenager. Philip says, if you can't, then what? Well, then I'll buy the horse myself. This horse was about 13 talents, which is way more money than even a Prince Alexander had. So Philip laughingly agrees to this bet, thinking his son's about to make a fool of himself. Alexander walks into the arena, and he's noticed something about this horse, Bucephalus. He's not savage, he's not violent, he's afraid of his own shadow. He is spooking at the sight of his shadow on the ground. And horses, to be honest, have been afraid of far more ridiculous things over time. So Alexander turns Bucephalus into the sun, leaps on him bareback because the Greeks didn't have saddles, and he gallops him into the sun, away from his shadow. And he lets the horse run until all of his fear and anxieties are gone. He feels the horse take a deep breath and relax, at which point he turns him around, rides him back with his shadow into the arena. And his father greets him with tears in his eyes and says, find yourself a bigger kingdom because Macedonia won't be enough for you. You've conquered the unconquerable horse. But Bucephalus became Alexander's partner. As Alexander conquered the world, Bucephalus was there by his side, all the way into India. Uh, When Bucephalus died in India, Alexander gave him a funeral and founded a city, Bucephalia, in his name. While they were traveling through what is now Afghanistan, members of some hill tribes hijacked Bucephalus. They stole him. Horse wrestling, horse wrestling, sorry, uh, was common practice, and Alexander lost his mind fact that his horse had been taken and threatened to destroy all of the villages until they gave him his horse back, which they did very quickly. And so the story of Alexander Bucephalus, this bond between horse and rider, has been passed down through history. It's appeared in all sorts of unusual places. In the 20th century, it resurfaced in an iconic children's story, the story of the Black Stallion, written by Walter Farley. So this story focuses around an unrideable black stallion. The idea is that Bucephalus was also a black stallion. So so it it, it revolves around an unrideable black stallion and a young boy named Alec, much like Alexander, 
Um, and only Alec can ride this horse, and together they do incredible things. And so the horse has been one of us, one of our most trusted partners through history. They have done a lot of crazy, strange things for us, and we've built a lot of partnerships with them. And some of these partnerships, like that of Alexander Bucephalus, have echoed through time and only added to the importance of this horse-human bond. Thanks for checking in, and we'll see you all next time.